In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create simple paginations in your Power BI reports. We're going to look at how you can create slicers to select which page to look at, control how many items there are per page, and how you can limit the slicer so that it only shows up to the total number of items that is available. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's have a quick look at this Power BI report that I prepared. It has a simple list of orders here using the table visual. It has some information about the different orders, such as when they were ordered, the year, as well as the total sales for that specific order. And as you can see with Power BI, when visuals like this don't have enough space for the data that it needs to show, it provides you the options to use uh, scroll bars, so either horizontal or vertical. So this allows you to scroll to the other orders in this list so that you can see all of them in this kind of way. However, you might have some requirements where you need to use pagination, where you can go to different pages, as opposed to a scroll bar. Now, while pagination outside of paginated reports is not really native in kind of the Power BI solution that we usually build in, with a bit of DAX know-how and combining multiple visuals together, we can kind of come up with a similar method of pagination. So let me show you. The first thing that we need to do is to create a rank in our table here so that each row has its own ID. And this ID is essentially what we're going to use to paginate through the list of items. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a quick measure here. I'm just going to call this one. I'll use the rank X uh, iterator here so that we can apply a rank into our orders. We're going to use all selected because we want the year filter to work in this uh, in this rank, use the orders table, which is where we have the majority of our information in. And then we're going to rank it by sales. And we'll just leave it like this for default. Uh, by default, it's ascending. So if we drag that measure into our table here, you can see that it will assign a rank to every single order that we have in our table here that we can now use to determine the pagination or where they should fit in our pagination method. The next thing is we need to add a slicer, which allows the users to select which page they want to see. To do that, we need to go to modeling, new parameter and numeric fields. We're just going to call this one paging and we'll leave it to whole number. We'll make the minimum to one and a maximum to 50. We can determine what this is later, um, but for now we'll change it to 50 and all this will do is it will generate a list of uh, a, a table a table with the lists between 1 to 50. So this is what we're going to use as our slicer. We're going to change the type of this to a tile so that we can choose between 1 to however many there are 50. Remove the slice header and there you go. So you have the slicer now that will allow you to choose which page you want to see. However, it's not exactly doing anything yet because it's not linked to our table. So we need to add a calculation to determine which orders fall into which page. So we're going to we're going to do that now. So let's create another measure here. We'll call this one item filter. So this is the filter that will apply to the table to make sure that we are only seeing the orders in a specific page. So we're going to create a couple of variables here going to create page. Uh, this is for the, the page value, the current, uh, what is selected. And then we're going to create two variables here, a start, which is where the start uh, index is, and an end. Uh, I'll explain more as we write this. So we're going to do a page minus one multiplied by 20 plus one. So what this does, and I can just show it to you quickly. So I've added the item filter DAX here that we've created and the start is showing as one. If I select two, it shows 21. This determines the starting index of where that uh, the, the filter starts so that we can add another logic to say for page two, we should show from uh, item 21 up to 40. 
and we determine or at least I determine that the limit for each page is 20 by creating this uh, by adding this number here 20 but you can change that into whatever you want maybe up to 10 if you want to show 10 items at a time or you can link it to another numeric parameter but for simplicity's sake we'll just keep it manual for now so we'll leave it to 20. So now that we know when the start is, we need to find out where the, the where it should end. And this one is a little bit easier. So it's basically just, just getting the, uh, the same calculation except um, just getting the end of it. So now that we have that, all we need to do is now wrap this into an if statement. And we're gonna find, check the rank of that specific row. And we'll say if the rank is greater than or equals to start and the rank is less than or equals to end is one. So now what this will do is if the rank or would that item fits into where the, the start and end is, it should give us one. So you will see that from uh, rank 21 to 40, that is in page two. Page one will be at the very beginning, as you can see here. So all we need to do from here is simply use the item filter as our filter here on our table to say either if it's one or if it's not blank. And it will just make sure that it's always showing only those items. I'm just going to make uh, some spacing here so that you can see everything. And then you don't actually need to show any of these anymore. You can just show the values as they are. And this should work as you expect them. There we go. There's another thing that you might want to think about implementing, which is a filter that limits the number of pages that is being shown by your slicer at the bottom. And that is because this slicer, as you can see, is only showing up to seven, but you have an index of up to 50 because that's what we built. And we want to make sure that we're only seeing the total, I mean, based on how many we have in our table to only show up to that point. So if there's only 40 items in our table, it should only show two pages, for example. And that's why I've added this slicer here at the top so we can kind of see how that will change based on our selection. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another measure here just to add uh, a filter for our paging. So I'm going to call this one paging filter. So first we're going to create a few variables here. One is the total, which is basically just getting the highest number of rank that we have. We'll use the rank here just to show you how this looks like. I'm just going to return it here. So depending on which year we select, for example, you can see that there is a certain number of items for each of those years. And we want to make sure we do a calculation to divide this by 20 so that we can uh, get only the certain number of pages for whatever we've selected. To do that, we need to create another variable here. We're just going to call this max page and we're going to divide the total to 20. We also need to wrap this with a round up to make sure it, it rounds up to the nearest digit above. And that's because we want to account for instances where we have, for example, in this year, we have 152 items. So that will, if we just kept it with div the division, it will give us seven pages, but we need up to eight pages because we need to account for anything above 140 because 20 items per page. So we need to make sure it's rounded up to the highest uh, number. So that gives us up to eight page for this year. So now that we've done that, we also now need to make sure we wrap this inside an if statement. So we need to add another, um, another logic here. And we want to check what page we're on. So if the page is uh, less than or equals to the max page, make it one. So this is what we will use as a filter for our slicer. So now we drag that into our slicer filter and we do the same thing is one. 
If you hit apply, you'll see that the slicer only goes up to eight because there's only 152 items in 1996. But as I change it, you'll see that you can, you'll be able to see more because there are more items in there. So if I just expand this a little bit, you'll see the difference. There we go. And that's really it for this video. There are a bunch of other ways that you can customize this to make this look more native. Uh, and maybe other customization features, like as I mentioned, you can adjust the number of items available for you per page by tying this into another uh, numeric parameter. So that's up to you if you want to do that. But at the very least, you should be able to now implement uh, pagination in your Power BI report. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.